Hi folks, we're going to have a look at uh, how we deal with pressing PU and cork, uh, etc. Um, any any um, sort of vinyl product, we need to actually sometimes open the seams, but you can't just put an iron onto it there because you're going to melt it. It's very, very simple. Some PUs um, or, and some corks, they might have some foiling on them and they are very heat resistant. They do, they, sorry, they are very heat um, actives, they, they do not like heat. So we sometimes need to press seams open, especially when we're making projects. So the best way for us to do this is to actually use a pressing mat. And we're, so we keep our seam open, use a pressing mat, and then you don't need any steam or anything. Just firmly press the seam open. And I leave this on, we're going to transfer some heat through this mat. Now it's, it doesn't lose much heat, but it does take a little bit to get going. So I'm just going to press that. Now the secret is, as soon as you've pressed that seam, you need to turn it and put it onto a cold surface. Put it onto a cold surface. And because you want to cool it down rapidly, so... <laughs> It's a, it'd be ideal if you actually had a marble countertop or a piece of marble because that's really cold. But a cold surface, this is just a cold surface, it's fine. Now you might need to do this a second time and with this time we'll do it from this side. Our applique mats are a heat transfer mat and they have a mesh in them. Now so they're not totally visible through but you can see what you're doing. Just be consistent, make sure that when you're doing these projects that you've always got the sweet pea label up towards you so that you know that if you've got any sticky on the mat, it will always be on the underside. There's no chance of your iron touching it. Right, so that's there, and up and onto a cold surface. And if you actually had a what we call a, a clapper, a pe the, the, one of those pieces of wood clappers in there, that would be ideal to put on there, put a book on it or what have you. Now you can't always get into every single seam to open it up, so that's not it's not it's not easy um, with with some seams. But that there is a nicely open seam. Just through using an applique mat, a pressing mat, um, just some heat, and then once the seam is open, putting it onto a cold surface. Now there's some other options as well. Sometimes when you're dealing with so let's say we've we've got a uh, a piece of PU and it's going onto the zip to go into a, um, a clutch or a bag or something like that, and then we've stitched it on. We need to fold it back, and then we can hold it into position. But sometimes with some PUs, you just find that you might want to actually have a little bit more crisp seam there. You just it's just that's a little bit alive not bad and it will be held down and it will be, it'll be fine but if it's not stitched sometimes it's nice to actually put some heat onto it and so this is what we call a dolly. It's just a piece of calico rolled up tightly and I've just put a few stitches in there. What I do is I just, I just iron it, get it hot, and then once it's hot put it on the seam where I want to press because I can't put the iron on here, and it's also in the hoop, I don't want to take it out of the hoop, but I want to be careful, so that there is now, is it being warmed through, and it's pressed. So I'll do that again, I'll heat the dolly. I don't know where the name dolly comes from, it's a tailoring term, the dolly used to be a piece of rolled up wool, and it had a raggy edge, and we used to wet it, and open the seams up when we were tailoring, and so it was called a tailor's, a tailor's dolly have no idea where that came from. There must be a story behind it. So, so that seam is now a little bit flatter, is which, and that gives you the finish on a project, is making sure that these seams are flat. You don't have to do it to every, to every seam. Some PUs are crisp enough to actually just push your finger along there and it will turn over nicely. Some of them are a little bit thicker and spongier and they need a little bit of help to stay there. If you can't press for some reason, there's another way of dealing with this. So <clears throat> when you're dealing with leatherware, you quite often will put a rubber-based glue along a seam 
um, but when you're dealing with this sort of um, product you wouldn't want to be using a rubber based glue but we have hoop tape which you can put all on the seam lift it up get it started there we go gotta be patient and then just by folding that over and pressing you won't want to put any stitching through that sticky tape you, that, that's something which you have to be aware of is make sure that you don't have to stitch through this but that has kept that seam open and that's a technique that you actually use when you're making garments more so than anything but it does transfer into making bags and projects so I hope this has been a little bit helpful. Um, you can't use these techniques everywhere, but if they help you along the way, that's all good.